This Rise and Shine podcast series has been made possible by the generosity of the Zeitelman Family Foundation, which is committed to the unity and continuity of the Jewish people through meaningful and relevant Jewish education and wisdom. It is a tree of life for those who hold fast to it, and those who uphold it are happy. Its ways are pleasant, all of its paths peaceful. Return us to you, God, so that we shall return. Renew our days as of old. This is Rise and Shine, a podcast that offers timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations to fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. Here is Adrian Gold Davis. Last week, I had to do something I've been putting off for years, and that was to call an arborist to prune away a tree in my backyard that is likely more than 70, 80 years old. Its trunk is so thick and so gnarled that you can't wrap your arms around it even if you're a giant, and its branches are thick as full tree trunks. So removing these two problematic branches was like taking down two full trees, and it was going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars cash, I might add, because that's what he wanted. So I grudgingly went to the bank, and I withdrew all of the money I had carefully saved over the last year, and I carried it home, resentful. I mean, really? Tree pruning costs $3,800? In an era of electric saws? Who's ripping me off? Well, The day their arborist arrived, he came with four other men. For 13 hours without break, they worked a process that humbled me. This was no walk in the park, especially in my narrow downtown house with about five feet between it and my neighbor's house. Strapped in with harnesses and rappelling a hundred feet up in the canopy, I was surprised at the skill and expertise it took to tame that beast of a tree and how respectful and deferent they were to that tree. They practically stroked it. And when one massive branch came down, they all gathered around to notice the shredded interior that carpenter ants had decimated with their tiny teeth, shredding this behemoth into sawdust. They pointed out marks and shadings that signal rot or damage, and they even explained the reason that the green shoots were sprouting out of the trunk. They were literally tree surgeons, and I watched with awe and more than a bit of shame. I tell you this because I'd always taken that tree for granted. I didn't maintain it as I should have. I didn't understand the absolute life, notwithstanding the ants, that coursed through its branches but I should have, because every Shabbat in the synagogue, I sing Eitz Chaim, the tree of life, as they prepare to close the ark. I love that song. Eitz Chaim means tree of life, and it refers to our Torah. Here, these are the English lyrics. It is a tree of life for those who hold fast to it, and those who uphold it are happy. Its ways are pleasant, all of its paths peaceful. Return us to you, God, so that we shall return, renew our days as of old. See, a tree is a wondrous thing. Torah references the planting of trees as one of Abraham's many acts of kindnesses and responsibility for others. There's a story in one of our sources that speaks of an old guy who was being watched while he was planting a fig tree. And the guy came over to him, this young guy, and said, do you really expect to live long enough to consume the fruits of your labor? And this man replied, I was born into a world flourishing with ready pleasures. My ancestors planted for me, and now I plant for my children. You know, we even have a holiday for trees. The 15th of the month of Shvat is called Tubi Shvat, and we call it the new year for the trees. Stephen Arnoff writes that a tree stood in the very center of the first human moral dilemma when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of knowledge. So one rabbinic tradition holds it was a fig tree. 
even though it's often thought of as an apple tree, which really was a misspelling or a mistranslation. Even though the fig tree, according to this interpretive literature, allowed Adam and Eve to doom themselves and their descendants to live a life in exile from paradise, the tree also offered them the first step towards their spiritual redemption by providing Adam and Eve fig leaves to cover their nakedness. Planting trees is an embodiment of the Jewish value of taking responsibility for each generation to cultivate resources for the next. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai once said, If you have a sapling in your hand and you're told, Look, the Messiah is here, you should first plant the sapling and then go out to welcome the Messiah. And Alicia Greenbaum writes that just as a seed must first rot before it can begin to generate new beginnings, a person intent on self-growth and character evolution must be ready to undergo revolutionary change to the point that the old I, the ego and self-awareness, is completely effaced. Only in an atmosphere of humility and acceptance can the new I develop. You see, my assumption that I was being ripped off came out of sheer ignorance. It came from that typical human assumption that if there's a group of skills or intelligences that you possess and someone else does not, well, we tend to diminish the value and import of anyone else's skills. I remember, like it was yesterday, talking to our marriage counselors at the beginning of my marriage. I was complaining that my husband is not as verbal as my tastes would like, not cerebrally or analytically driven like I am. The therapist laughed and said, Adrian, if I had to be stranded on a desert island with you or with your husband, I would definitely choose him. Why? I asked her. I was a bit curious and a bit surprised. Because, she said, you could philosophize about our situation brilliantly. You could write an essay or even give a speech about it and how it impacts us. But your husband, he could get us off the island. Well, that was true. And so could that arborist. His grace and his agility was part mountaineer and part high wire act. And his calm approach to saving that tree showed a spiritual acuity that I clearly lack. While we know that all human beings are intricately connected, this man was able to extend his concentric circles of love to every living thing on earth. Trees are integral to the world. God tells us this, and you don't have to be a so-called tree hugger to get it. This week, can you examine where you might diminish someone's worth vis-a-vis -vis their skill set and where that skill set is something you don't possess or even think is worth possessing? Because when you watch someone in their flow while they're doing their thing, that thing that you perhaps thought had no value, you begin to see how many branches are part of the majesty of human abilities. It took an arborist to show me how I clearly could not see the forest for the trees. Thanks for listening to Rise and Shine. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join Adrian again next time for more timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations that fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. This podcast was sponsored by the Zeitelman Family Foundation. Spread the wisdom. Inspire Jewish individuals around the globe by supporting Momentum's podcasts. To sponsor, contact podcast at MomentumUnlimited.org. You're listening to a Momentum podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.